Welcome, everybody, to Merle's Pearls of Business Wisdom, where I, Merle M. Singer, the Relationship Miracle Worker, talk about all things relationship and how relationship affects you in your workplace. Now, today is a special day because we have a guest. We have a fabulous guest, by the way. And his name is A.J. McQuarrie. And I have to tell you, people, he embodies the entrepreneurial journey in its entirety. Trust me, you will find out it is totally true. He started from, well, he continued uh, from turning $20,000 into a multi-million dollar venture. I cannot say that I have to sitting in bankruptcy court. That's, that's the highs and the lows. Former CEO of Karma Box Vending, he expanded the pioneering healthy vending machine company uh, across 80 US cities in three years. That's impressive. His... Uh, uh, now he's gone from that and he's steering Keep Going Headquarters or Keep Going HQ, I should say. Uh, there he empowers entrepreneurs to go through the brand development, the digital marketing, the online programs, in other words, to do everything he's already done, the good parts and to how to avoid the bad parts. That's what he offers. His upcoming book, Craft Your Comeback, turning setbacks into advantages after failures, after flukes, and after mess ups. <laughs> uh, he guides the reader to overcome the obstacles in their lives. And we all have obstacles in our lives. He is also the co-host of the 40 Under 40 podcast, and lives in Boston with his loving partner, feisty Scottish terrier, and adorable Frenchie. So who's the adorable Frenchie? My doggy, Blue. Your Scottish <laughs> terrier? <laughs> yeah. Oh, cool. So welcome, welcome, AJ. I'm so glad that you're here. Thank you, Merle. What an intro. Yeah, yeah. It's a uh, and it, it it tells your story in 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 two minutes. I have to say, but now we're going to get a little more about it, huh? So so you're sure. an author. You've got a a podcast. You've got uh, uh, some programs uh, that you're helping. Uh, helping people with. So go ahead. Tell me how it all got started. Yeah, absolutely. Well, first of all, thank you for having me. I'm a huge fan of Merle's Pearls. I've been a an avid watcher for many years now. So you've been putting out great content. I appreciate it. I learned a lot about relationships through you. And yeah, just kind of going off of what you were saying, I I've definitely been on this roller coaster ride of entrepreneurship since I was a little kid, basically. I, uh, I have one of those cheesy stories where I've been an entrepreneur since I was 10 years old at a, a bargain basement store. And, you know, it didn't last very long, but my entrepreneurial spirit always did throughout the years. And I had various ventures, but the one that kind of the the biggest and most remarkable one, if you will, would have been my vending business, which you mentioned in the intro, Karma Box Vending. So that kind of put me on the entrepreneurial map, so to speak. We grew very quickly. Um, it was a, a great experience. It was a lot all at once. I was 20-something years old running a multi-million dollar business. I had no business doing that myself. And it kind of caught up to me. And I was just basically in over my head. And I ended up going bankrupt. I went through a huge bankruptcy, $1.5 million dollars. I shut that doors down in 2018. So it's been, it's been, you know, five plus years. It's taken a long time to heal from that emotionally and kind of, you know, so bankruptcy is like back, the ultimate failure. 
looking back and you've had this five plus years, you certainly had the skill to do what you did or you couldn't have done it. So what, what, how, how could you have tweaked that past so that you could have used all your skills and not had the mess up? Yeah, so it's a great question. I did a lot of reflecting over the years, of course, and like wanting to learn from it and grow from it, right? Um, I actually put together a, a free training session. It's not out yet, but hopefully by the time this podcast comes out, your listeners can get it, um, where I go over the seven mistakes that killed my business and can save yours, right? Because that's the best way to learn from other people's mistakes. Um, the hardest way to learn is often from your own mistakes. But I would say I I, I noticed, like, just with the title, I noticed at least seven, like, business killers that I had. I think if I were to go back and do it all over again, the first and foremost, um, it, it comes down to like my financial ignorance. So I was often not, you know, I, I attached to the story that I was bad with the numbers and I, you know, I lived that story every single day. So I intentionally, I was ignoring the numbers. I didn't want to know the truth. Um, I was kind of not that detail oriented. I was kind of focused on other different other things, but I should have had someone in place doing that for me. Um, so I was kind of not reading like financial statements regularly, which you're definitely supposed to be doing. Um, I was often fearful to check the bank balance and just leading on the bank balance, right? And not looking at those financial statements. So I just had kind of for a long time, I was ignoring them and things caught up with me for sure. By the time I finally started taking the numbers seriously, it was just like kind of just seeing the truth behind everything and all of our liability adding up and that sort of thing. And that's kind of when it all caught up to me. Definitely part another part of it was just growing too fast. Um, I, I didn't properly manage that rapid growth. And growth can often be a business killer for a lot of entrepreneurs. Um, so it was like this amazing high, this cash coming in, but then it was also cash just as much, if not more going out to pay for expenses and that sort of thing. So I was also growing too fast. Um, I didn't have the best experienced team, um, which I'll, I can talk more about that in a moment. But I think part of it was at the time I was a college dropout and I was very insecure about that. So I intentionally didn't hire like not even that college educated people is important, but maybe in some of these roles, I should have had at least more experienced people. And I, I was kind of just hiring entry level type folks doing very important jobs like operations and helping me lead my sales team and that sort of thing and dealing with client relations. Whereas if I had like a strong person there and operations and kind of taking care of that and filling that gap, because it was a huge gap, I was more sales and marketing focused and um, I needed someone to kind of help me more with the day to day. And I had some amazing team members. There's no doubt about that. But overall, I should have had more experienced folks. That, I'd say I just another couple. That's an interesting point. I think as, as an entrepreneur, just like you said, you, you, it, you're doing all new stuff. So it's all scary. So you tend to be insecure. When you're insecure, you don't want anybody smarter than you. But duh, you're the one hiring them. Yes. So you got it, whether you know it or not, you got to be have some smarts. And it absolutely pays to, to hire somebody that knows more than you in this particular in the finance in the which at whatever your weakness is to get somebody really smart yeah yeah and also it was like and other things like just and it's one of the killers too is like I was like swooped in the chaos so when things were growing that quickly it was like a fast roller coaster ride so I often didn't have time to sit down and do those things and really plan out the team I should have it was very important but I was also just kind of swooped into the chaos of the business, running the day-to-day, -day, putting out a lot of fires. You know, I was managing 89 clients at the top, at the peak of it, plus 17 employees, plus hundreds of vending location partners where we were setting up the machines. It was just kind of like a lot. It was a very, like, a lot of different moving pieces. Um, and, like, one of the other things is linked to that is, like, I had a flawed business model. So I, I wasn't 
if you looked at the numbers, it wasn't, I wasn't profitable. I, I should have been charging way more and I should have had different, more creative ways to get recurring revenue and that sort of thing. And then just an overfocus on sales too, and not profit. So my mentor all the time, she would always ask me like, I tell her, oh, and there were some months, Merle, we made $300,000 May, 2017, that month one month, 300 K in cash. That was amazing. And I would kind of be very proud of it to my mentor, but like we made 300 K this month or 200 and something K the month before. Uh, and she'd always say, Oh yeah. How much of that did you keep? And it was a very good question. I didn't always know the answer. It's like, yeah, it's complicated. It's this, it's that. And I just, uh, it, it was a lot. Also just being too cocky. I was getting kind of arrogant and thinking I was a, a, a better entrepreneur than I actually was. And I got to my head a little. <laughs> <laughs> well, you were amazing. I mean, let's face it, to do that, that's amazing. Period. Yeah, it was an amazing, it was an amazing situation and circumstance. And I'm very, in many ways, proud of that experience. But also I look back and there's some things I was like, ah, oh, if only. Right. Sure. I, I th but I, I do think that even in our mistakes, uh, we need to honor some thing we did that was good. Because <laughs> to get where you got, I mean, you made some really hot shot mistakes. You had to really do some good stuff to get there. So, yeah. Yeah. And we did many good things, um, but oftentimes it's, oftentimes it's, you know, it's like on social media, you have a bunch of positive comments and it's that one negative comment that really gets you. So, um, but that was just a big failure or in the book I talk about that it was a big F up. Um, it was a very big mistake on my end. And unfortunately, some of my clients uh, lost, some of them lost a lot of money. They invested a lot of money and it was just a bad situation. And that was kind of, that, not even kind of, that definitely was the hardest part of yeah. the whole thing. Yeah. I can see that. That, that, that's got to hurt. Yeah. So, so what's next? Yeah. So today kind of, you know, actually, reflect a lot of reflection on my last business it's like okay i know what went wrong right the seven mistakes that killed my business but what went right um you brought you brought up a great point like there's still great aspects of being able to go from zero dollars to four million dollars plus in sales right selling these uh, vending packages so i i kind of shifted my focus today towards empowering my fellow entrepreneurs on their own journeys so i started keep going hq that's where we, you know, our mission is to guide aspiring business owners in brand development, digital marketing, content marketing, that sort of thing. We have online programs. And it was just kind of when I was reflecting on my last business, it was like, okay, what did I do right? We did, we had a great brand. We had great marketing, great, you know, sales processes and that sort of thing to close deals. So I started back in 2020, this business at the time it was called Keep Going Media. And I just started, I wasn't even trying to get clients. I just, I posted a video online about my business failure. I became very open and transparent and authentic about my journey as an entrepreneur. And, you know, that's very powerful. And that ended up helping grow my business. Just a few people, referrals, this and that. And it's not anywhere near where I want it to be or where my last business was in the sense of sales and that sort of thing. But it's been a great journey to work with entrepreneurs. We just rolled out uh, virtual assistance services, so VA service. So we have marketing solutions, we have virtual assistance, and we help with outbound outreach. I think those three things are really important, and a lot of entrepreneurs are struggling with them. So um, I got to build out a, a VA team in the Philippines over the years, and we have some great people in the Philippines and Mexico, throughout the world, developers, that sort of thing. So that's kind of my focus right now, Merle. It's been awesome. It's been very fun. So uh, I want to know um, when in, in the midst of your first career, you it, it was hectic. It was like you, you didn't have time to breathe. And I think sometimes people think that that's the way it's supposed to be. 
if you're really being successful, you've got to be just going everywhere, being crazy all the time about, but making things happen. When really, I think uh, that uh, you're, you're pointing out that I don't know, but I suspect that maybe you have more time now to reflect. You have more time now to say, oh, yeah, this is a good idea. Oh, I can ask. Let me get some help with this. And 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 sometimes, don't you think sometimes, I, I, I'm not a great meditator, but I do believe in it. But I do think that it's good to have a, a significant amount of time to just think. Just yes. to be there and and have it all swirl in your head and start clearing it up and classifying it and figuring out what is fun and what is it. Yeah, you know, it's funny over the last five, six, seven years with my throughout my entrepreneurial journey recently, I get I've been asked enough times if I meditate and knowing they know the answer is no. And then they follow up with, oh, you should meditate. Here's a, a good tool I use. Or this is what I, I've just so many people have mentioned this to me that I'm like, OK, clearly I'm very high strong and I should meditate. And yeah, there's something about that mindfulness, but also just building a solid foundation. I think that's like the core of it. And when you have a solid foundation and that takes being careful and methodical and there's no rush, right? Um, there, there should be a lot of thought put into it, planning put into it. We're often kind of shown this crazy side of entrepreneurship and I think that's unhealthy. It's unhealthy for us, like physically, mentally, emotionally, our families, our friends, that sort of thing. And there are so many different ways to be an entrepreneur today. There are so many different business models out there and ways you can do it. And, you know, we're in the gig economy, a lot of side gigs. A lot of people have multiple things going on and that's okay. Um, and it's like whatever success looks like for you as an entrepreneur, you got to really think about that and plan it out and be careful. Um, yeah. Yeah, and I don't think you have to meditate. To yeah, meditate. I know. Yeah, yeah. That was you just an example. You could do a crossword puzzle. Mm -hmm. uh, or go for a walk. Or go for walking is awesome. Yes. Uh, but something like that 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 gives you gives your gives your head space so that you can reflect and and plan kind of both at the same thing so one of the things you, yeah you did moving forward as a part of your reflection is is you wrote a book craft yes. your comeback I yeah the whole that's thing. craft your good. comeback turning setbacks into advantage wait this is a whole paragraph <laughs> <laughs> turning setbacks into advantages after failures, flukes, and F-ups. Yes. So failures, flukes, F-ups, those are the three Fs. Basically, <laughs> those are the three different categories of setbacks. And I get into detail in the book and why that's important. And I can talk about that briefly here. But yeah, Merle, I wrote a book. Uh, I know you wrote a book. I know a lot of entrepreneurs. It's a great tool. And it's uh, I'm looking forward to it finally coming out uh, in a few weeks. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, I'm very excited. It's been a process. I started the book back in 2015, 2016. Really? It's been many, many years at this point. And I I started the book when my business, my vending business hit a million dollars in sales its first year. I finally realized and thought, oh, I have some type of credibility. I want to help entrepreneurs. I want to get into this world of speaking and coaching and book writing and training sessions and that sort of thing. I think that's a great business model for many reasons, but I just wanted to get in there and make an impact. So that's when I started writing the book. When I finally finished the book, it was March 2018. That's when Karma Box closed down. I had a first draft ready to go, everything done. At the time, it was 12 chapters. And the book was called, originally it was Pivot to Your First Million. And then it changed and evolved. But the whole idea was, 
you know, how I built my business from scratch, how I recovered from a, um, a big tragedy in the process of building my business and that sort of thing. And yeah, after my business tanked, I was like, well, I have no credibility anymore. I'm not going to be able to get this book out there. But then I started reflecting and writing and learning. And I realized, you know, a few months later is like, actually, I have an even better story now. I can help people even more so, right? Being on that journey, having those experiences. So I went back and I did a whole rewrite over the last few years and it's finally finished. My editor is wrapping things up and we're ready to go and get it out there on Amazon. I think that's uh, awesome. I, I think part of your giving back, I, I have to say, is becoming involved with National Speakers Association. And uh, through the years to the point where you're president now, National Speakers Association, Southern California. And, uh, and, and, uh, and that's how we know each other. And so I have an opportunity to see you functioning. And you very much are open uh, well you're open uh, yes vulnerable that incredibly so uh, but you're very giving and um uh, outward bound to people to what in what ways you can help them so i i uh, i think um i think that's part of your strength thank you yeah. yeah, I think today, I think going back to kind of entrepreneurship and like business models and that sort of thing, I think creating content, right? Content-based marketing is huge. Podcasting is huge. It's a way to get your message across, a way to talk about your brand. There's YouTube, there's training sessions, there's live streaming, there's webinars. There are so many different ways. There's books, articles, you know, just with a website, with articles, you got to keep going to you'll see a bunch of articles on there. There are so many ways to get your message and make an impact out there better than ever before. So, um, but yeah, thank you. I appreciate it. I, I'm proud to know you through that association. Uh, and, 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 and it, um, so my thing is relationship. And this is one of the things that actually I think is your strength at this point. Now, I don't know you from, uh, uh, from your vending days, but, uh, I think you, uh, even as president, you have more people helping out on on the board than other presidents have. So if if you didn't take good advantage uh, in your vending company, you've learned that lesson and you really uh, are able to entice people to uh, work with you. And I think it it it's making the uh, chapter better than ever so um i just had to had to put in how all of this is a matter of relationship <laughs> and and uh and the skills that you have as as or that we all need in order to to make it work so tell me about uh tell me about your um the courses that you're giving, uh, um, something headquarters, I just lost it. Where is it? Oh, keep going uh, HQ. Uh, yeah, so keep going HQ. Yeah, we're offering. So our main offerings as far as services go, we offer marketing solutions. Um, so that's kind of what I got started with. Logos, websites, uh, landing pages, that sort of thing, setting up CRMs. Um, setting up sales processes, that sort of thing. We have a whole slew of different options there. Um, but virtual assistants. So if uh, you need a VA, you need some work, but you don't want to invest in a full-time or part-time person, it's a great opportunity for you to check out our services. And then we, we do some outbound outreach. So if you need if you need help with outbound calling or emailing or you know LinkedIn messaging, that sort of thing, uh, folks on my team can help. Um, kind of under the same umbrella is we have products as well. So keep going Academy where our first program is called resilience reset. And that's linked to the book, craft your comeback. 
anybody who buys the book will get free access to Resilience Reset. And we'll have other future programs as well, but that's a, the first one. It's all about mindset and um, taking key components of the book as well, which there's there's a whole framework to the book, which I'd love to chat with you about as well. We have um, the three Fs, as I mentioned, failures, flukes, and F-ups. Failures, uh, you know, you know what a failure is. You mess up in a test. It's a little bit of in your control, out of your control. Flukes, totally out of your control. F-ups, totally Are you there? I want to just pick up where I, where we left off. Ah, uh, oh, there you go. Yes. Okay. Um, Move from San Diego to Los Angeles um, from living in a skyscraper downtown San Diego on the 23rd floor to now a tiny, tiny little studio apartment. Um, it was a, it was a big reality check and wake up call and just kind of a lot of things at once, right? Emotionally. But the one thing I had left from my success was my Mercedes. I had a very expensive car payment. I didn't even own it outright. And, and I wanted to keep that car so badly it was the one piece of my success that I had left. It was totally materialistic. And now it's like so stupid. I don't even know what I was thinking. But at the time, it was important. I drive a freaking Prius now. So like, that's where I'm at. <laughs> I've come a long way of gro growing over the years. So I wanted this Mercedes so badly, I needed to keep it. And then I talk about it in the book. I talk about it on a few videos that I've done over the years. And I talk about it in my Keep Going Academy. It's like, this, I'm about to finally settle into my apartment. Everything's ready. I'm about to take a little power nap. It was like seven or eight o'clock at night and I fall asleep and I wake up to a big loud crash, bang, kaboom. I get up, the dogs get up, my whole freaking neighborhood gets up and I'm going to go outside to check out what's going on. I hear a baby crying. So big car accident, baby crying. This is serious. I put my dog's leashes on. I'm about to go outside. I'm opening my door to the apartment and my property management lady comes running upstairs. She's like, mister, mister, your car, your car. I'm like, what? No, not my car. And I go outside with the dogs. And then there's my car catapulted 20 feet up above on the sidewalk. Another car in the middle of the road all crashed. And it was just... There it was, the whole neighborhood. We were all standing around just watching. I'm with my dogs. And I'm just like, this cannot be happening to me. Anyway, that was kind of the, and it was just, just bad timing. I was also Ubering. So it was like my source of income, right? I just had, it was like the last thing I needed right now. And that's when I was just like, you know what? What the hell? You know, my car gets towed, everything's taken away. And I'm just sitting there on the sidewalk. And I just start thinking like, why me? Why does this have to happen to me? Why am I the king of setbacks? Like, what's going on? And I'm sitting there and I, I think back to my all the other crap that I've gone through. At that point, I was 29. I was young. A uh, uh, boyfriend dying, a uh, bankruptcy, uh, Dragon Zen. I was on the Canadian version of Shark Tank. I failed basically on national television. Kevin O'Leary called me a cockroach. Just thinking of these crazy, big, remarkable experiences. And it's like, how the hell did I survive them? <laughs> because I wanted to so badly find a way to recover from this one. Because this seemed like a really another big setback, just more salt added in a ba already bad wound. And then I started realizing I do have a process that I've been following subconsciously. And I wrote it all out. And it was 
perfectly spelled out P I L L pill. You know, love when that happens, right? And then I like realized like this is the comeback pill. This is what I take to get my comeback, to overcome things, to get through these setbacks, to navigate this heartache that we all experience in varying degrees of life, right? So I I looked it up, I spelled it all out. Okay, pill. So I'll just go through it with you. The P is for pain. The second, the I is for impact. And the first L is lesson. And then the fourth L is letting it go. So the first thing you do is you feel the pain. You get upset, be mad, cry, vent it out with a friend. Whatever you have to do, you feel the pain. Study after study after study shows this is a very important part in grief in general. But it's just an important part to help overcome your your setbacks. You feel the pain. But you don't want it to go on for too long, right? (laughs) There's a balance. But what is too long? Who knows? It depends on the situation and you and your whatever's going on. Um, so you feel the pain. The second one's impact. You really analyze like, okay, how much impact will this actually have on my life? Right. In the grand scheme of things, what's the impact? So to find out the impact, you ask yourself, will this matter in one week? Will this matter in one month? Will this matter in one year? Okay. But Matt, if it's not even going to matter in one week, which I often, I'm like, oh, I'm making a big deal about this. It's, you know, and I move on. But sometimes, yeah, it will matter in one week. My car, it did. I had to go through a whole process. I was, you know, had to get a bike and it was a whole thing. And I, so will this matter in a week, a month, a year? Sometimes just by looking at it from those, from that lens, you realize, ah, it's fine. It's not that big of a deal. The third part is lessons. There are lessons in everything. We just talked about my bankruptcy. We could go through lessons on all of our setbacks in life. What did you learn? What did you get out of it? Obsessively look for the lessons, write them down, talk them out, talk them out with, to you, with your partner and your friends and look at the lessons and find them. They're there. And then that just leads you to your last point And it's just letting it go and way easier said than done, but I find you follow the first three steps and it's much easier just to let it go and get it out there. And I have a bonus tip if you want to hear that, but I want to, if, let me know, I've been blabbing on about this. No, no, no. I'm writing down, look for lessons. They're there. I'd like that. Yes. I wanted a bonus. Or would I say no to a bonus? So the, the bonus step in here is like, sometimes you go through that process and you still are feeling like crap about it. And that's why I followed that process with this car and my car getting smashed and nothing, nada. I was like, okay. And then the next day, the day after I was still feeling a little, a little bummed out and a little sad and it was really impacting me. So that's when I said, okay, there's another thing I do. And there's another thing that everybody should try is you take, you do plan B. So plan B is, I was originally calling it delusional optimism. Um, I think it's more so illusional optimism where you create this illusion. So we attach to stories all the time, right? Whether they're true or not, we make up stories. We try to do everything in our power to prove those stories right. (laughs) So we do it. We're guilty of it. So I was so fixated on the car, my Mercedes. It made me look good, feel good. I needed that car and I was attaching to these stories. And I said, no. What if, and this is when the whole thing came to my head, is illusional optimism. So creating a new illusion of what the outcome could have been. So that weekend, it was Memorial Day weekend in Los Angeles. I was Ubering, as I was telling you. So what I did is I convinced myself, if I did not get that car, if that car was not smashed, then what would have happened is I would have been driving around Los Angeles in that car and I would have been in an even worse off accident, maybe injured, maybe killed, whatever. You make up this worse off situation if the setback didn't happen to you. So it's if then, if the setback, if my car was not totaled, then 
I would have been an insert a worse off scenario. Driving, Memorial Day weekend, busy weekend in Los Angeles, Ubering, bad car accident, worse off than I am now. And then when you reframe it in those in that through that lens, you start to realize, oh, thank you, setback. And <laughs> you become grateful and you kind of can move on. And it, it helps a lot and it helped me in that situation. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I understand that. I understand that. You know, AJ, I, I, uh, I, I think, uh, I think, I think you're doing uh, okay. So, if you didn't have this bankruptcy, you wouldn't be here. You wouldn't be able to teach other people the true lessons of. You know, when we falter, we just pick ourselves up and move on. And that you, we all end up doing things that we wish we hadn't done. And, you know, that's just the way it is. And we just try to make the balance of life so that what we do well uh, evens it all out. Totally. And, yeah. I I feel like... You know, I'm going to look back on my bankruptcy and that experience and I'm going to say, wow, you know, and I talk about this in the book actually as well as Steve Jobs famously said at a commencement address um, that you have to be confident that the dots in life are going to connect, right? And when we always look backwards, we can see the dots connecting. Oh, if I didn't do that, if I didn't go here and I didn't meet this person, then this wouldn't have happened. And you can see the dots connecting when you look back. Steve Jobs in his commencement address, which was very inspiring, I live by this all the time, is you just have to have that same conviction and confidence that moving forward, the dots are going to connect. And I know that my bankruptcy, while it was so painful and so horrible and really crappy in many ways, I know that someday I'm going to look back and see these dots connecting and be grateful for it, learn amazing experiences, be able to do way more because of it. And um you know, I'm I'm currently, I go to Boston University. I'm getting my MBA from BU. I went back to get my, finish my bachelor's degree in Los Angeles when I was living there years back. So I'm telling you this because I'm still learning, still growing. But, but I know that if I, if that experience didn't happen back then, I wouldn't be doing what I did and wouldn't be doing what I'm doing now and wouldn't even be on this podcast with you. Arguably, I may have been so stressed out. I could be dead. <laughs> I could be uh, or on my way to being in a lot of having a lot of health problems as an, as I grow, grow older and that, that sort of thing, because I was under so much stress, so much pressure. Even my hair was falling out and just I, my skin was bad. I physically would looked a lot different. I looked a lot older than I look now even. And I was in my 20s then. So I, I tell you this because, yeah, I, I know for a fact that I'm going to look back and see that it was meant to be for whatever reason. I'll take that. I'll take that. And, and that is a lesson that's good to pass forward. Absolutely. It's true for all of us. Yeah. So do you have some uh, uh, some final words that you'd like to give? Or uh, a little commercial, maybe? Sure, yeah. So if anybody listening, uh, I, I welcome you to go to my website, keepgoinghq.com. So we're the entrepreneur's headquarters. We are going to be releasing a lot more content. There's some content on there now, but you'll see more. We have some great training sessions coming up on how to leverage virtual assistants. Uh, we have one on tech tools, um, tech tools to help grow your business. We have one on ChatGBT coming out. A lot of cool content, the seven mistakes that killed my business and can save yours, that will be coming out as well. So we're going to be offering a lot of free content, free um, like learning experiences. And then there will be also the ways you can, if you want help with your marketing or you want to hire a VA or you want to, you know, get my book, that will also be on the website and that sort of thing. So please go to keepgoinghq.com. Okay. Okay. 
Uh, so I want to thank everybody for listening to Merle's Pearls of Business Wisdom with me, your host, Merle M. Singer, the Relationship Miracle Worker. You can find this episode and all past episodes on RelationshipMiracleWorker.com slash podcast, as well as on Spotify, for goodness, and Apple, uh, Apple Podcasts, Amazon Music, all of your other favorite podcast platforms. So thank you, and we'll see you next time. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Bye, everyone.